Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna go over the top five Mandalorian sects. And I'm gonna add a bonus one at the end of this, so it's really gonna be six, but we're gonna focus on five. Now, in the Star Wars universe, there are several different sects of Mandalorians. There are more than five. There's many, each with its own unique beliefs, practices, and traditions. So today we're going to go over a brief overview of some of the most notable Mandalorian sects. Let's go all the way back to the Old Republic, and let's start with the Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders. The Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders were a group of Mandalorian warriors who emerged during the Old Republic era in the Star Wars universe. They were known for their extreme ideology, which emphasized conquest, expansion, and the aggressive spread of Mandalorian culture. Some notable members of Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders were, of course, Mandalore the Ultimate. This was the leader of the Neo-Crusaders. Mandalore the Ultimate was a fierce warrior and strategist who sought to expand the influence of the Mandalorian people. I'll go over him in detail in a video just about Mandalore the Ultimate. The second would be Cassus Fett. He was a high-ranking member of the Neo-Crusaders and a skilled warrior and tactician who served as Mandalore's right-hand man. He was an ancestor of Jango and Boba Fett and was mentioned in various Star Wars mediums. Number three can be Roland Dyer, a former member of the Neo-Crusaders who later defected to the Republic. Roland Dyer was a skilled warrior and fighter who was known for his loyalty and honor. Now, Neo-Crusaders differed from other Mandalorian sects in that they embraced a highly aggressive and expansionist ideology, seeking to conquer and dominate other cultures in the name of Mandalorian supremacy. They also placed a strong emphasis on traditional warrior values such as honor, loyalty, and courage, but saw these values as being in service of their ultimate goal of conquest. This philosophy put them at odds with other Mandalorian factions, such as the pacifist New Mandalorians and the more traditionalist True Mandalorians. The Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders were seen as an extremist faction within the Mandalorian culture, representing a dangerous and aggressive form of militarism that threatened to destabilize the galaxy. Overall, the Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders were a significant faction in the Star Wars universe, representing a unique perspective on the Mandalorian culture and their role in the galaxy. Their legacy continues to be explored in various Star Wars media, and their influence can be seen in the development of the characters of Jango and Boba Fett. Next up, number two, we've got Death Watch. Now, Death Watch was a radical sect of Mandalorians that believed in the restoration of Mandalore's warrior culture through violent means. They rejected the pacifist ideals of the new Mandalorians and believed that only through strength and conflict can their people achieve true greatness. As a splinter group that originated during the Clone Wars, they fully rejected Duchess Satine Kree's and instead embraced the warrior traditions of their people. Led by the charismatic and ruthless Pre Vizsla, Death Watch sought to restore Mandalore to its former glory as a warrior society. They carried out attacks against Republic and Separatist forces alike, as well as other Mandalorian factions that they deemed to be too weak or compromised. You can kind of think of Death Watch as very elitist beings who thought they were number one. Now, they were known for their distinctive black and red armor, which set them apart from other Mandalorian factions. They also wielded a variety of weapons, including blasters, vibro blades, and flamethrowers, and they were extremely skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They were, after all, very aggressive, just like their original people. Some notable members of Death Watch include Pre Vizsla, as we saw in the Clone Wars, who fought Darth Maul. Pre Vizsla was a skilled warrior and strategist who was determined to restore Mandalore to its warrior past. He was voiced by Jon Favreau in the Clone Wars animated series. The second would be Bo Katan Kreez, sister to Satine Kreez, a former member of Death Watch. Bo-Katan Kreese eventually left the group after becoming disillusioned with its violent methods. She went on to become a leader in the Mandalorian resistance against the Empire and later joined forces with Din Djarin, creating her own subsect called the Night Owls. Third notable member of the Death Watch is Gar Saxon. He was a high-ranking member of Death Watch and a skilled warrior and tactician who served as Pre Vizsla's right-hand man. He later went on to serve as an Imperial Super Commando under Darth Maul's Shadow Collective. 
We also have to mention Rook Cast, a female Mandalorian warrior who is one of Death Watch's most skilled fighters. Rook Cast was known for her expertise in close quarter combat and her proficiency with a variety of weapons. So overall, Death Watch was a significant faction in the Star Wars universe, representing a unique blend of Mandalorian warrior traditions and extremist ideology. Their impact was felt throughout the Clone Wars and beyond. Number three, the new Mandalorians. We can't mention Death Watch without talking about these guys. The new Mandalorians are a group that arose after the devastating Mandalorian Wars. They rejected the violent past of their people and instead sought to establish a society based on pacifism, neutrality, and diplomacy. They believe that Mandalore's future lies in cooperation with other cultures rather than in conflict. A pacifist faction of Mandalorians that emerged in the Star Wars universe were all led by Duchess Satine Kreese. This is why them and Death Watch had such a big issue with each other. They had completely different values. They also placed a strong emphasis on education, the arts, and technological innovation, and were instrumental in transforming Mandalore into a prosperous and peaceful society. Notable members of the New Mandalorians were of course Duchess Satine Kreese, the founder and leader of the New Mandalorians. Satine was a strong-willed and principled leader who was committed to building a better future for her people. She was a close friend and confidant of Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi and was portrayed by Anna Graves in Star Wars The Clone Wars. This philosophy put them at odds with other Mandalorian factions, such as of course Death Watch and the Mandalorian Protectors, who viewed the new Mandalorians as weak and cowardly. This led to conflict between the various Mandalorian sects, with the new Mandalorians often finding themselves caught in the middle. Overall, the new Mandos were a significant faction in the Star Wars universe, representing a unique perspective on their Mandalorian culture and their role in the galaxy. Their influence can be seen in the Mandalorian show, as we have many different Mandalorians of all walks of life and all different factions. The next up would be True Mandalorians. The True Mandalorians are a sect that emerged in the aftermath of the Mandalorian Wars. They believed in the traditional Mandalorian values of honor, courage, and strength, but reject the extreme violence of the Death Watch. They seek to maintain Mandalorian culture and traditions while also avoiding unnecessary bloodshed. The True Mandalorians were a group of Mandalorian warriors who believed in the traditional warrior culture of their people as opposed to the pacifist ideology of the new Mandos. Notable members of the True Mandalorians include Jaster Moreal, the leader of the True Mandalorians and a skilled warrior and strategist. He played a significant role in the Mandalorian Wars, which were fought between the Mandalorians and the Republic. He was a staunch defender of Mandalorian culture and traditions, and he fought to protect his people from outside threats. Now, in Legends, Jaster Muriel was also known as the mentor of Jango Fett, and I would even go as far as saying this is canon when we saw Boba bring up the hologram of who his suit belonged to in The Mandalorian Season 2. Now, I should mention that Star Wars canon has not yet explored true Mandalorians in detail at all. So the members of the clan may be very different from what was established in Legends. But we've also got Montross, Cal Skirata, and Waylon Vow. Now, Waylon Vow was actually pretty cool. He was a Mandalorian who trained the clone troopers when they were cloned. And he was a former member of the true Mandalorians. He in fact trained several squads of clone commandos, including Omega Squad and Delta Squad. You can actually learn more about his story in the Republic Commando books. Next, Jango Fett. One of the most famous true Mandalorians, Jango Fett was a renowned bounty hunter and mercenary who became the template for the clone army of the Galactic Republic for those who are new to Star Wars. He was of course portrayed by Tamora Morrison in Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones, and then of course Tamora played Boba Fett in The Mandalorian. Next of course we have Boba Fett, son and clone of Jango Fett, who inherited his father's armor and weapons. The true Mandalorians differed from other Mandalorian sects in that they embraced the traditional warrior culture of their people, which included a code of honor, loyalty, and respect for their enemies. They believed in the importance of strength, skill, and courage in battle, and saw warfare as a means of asserting their dominance and preserving their way of life. 
The true Mandos also opposed the Mandalorian Protectors, a faction of Mandalorians who served as the elite soldiers of the new Mandalorians and were seen as betraying the warrior traditions of their people. Overall, the true Mandalorians were a significant faction in the Star Wars universe, representing a unique perspective on the Mandalorian culture. Now, these guys aren't supposed to be confused with Mandalorian Neo Crusaders. As I've stated, true Mandalorians were a faction of Mandalorian warriors who opposed the violent and expansionist ways of Death Watch. The Mandalorian Neo Crusaders, on the other hand, were a later faction of Mandalorian warriors who emerged during the Mandalorian Wars, a major conflict that occurred approximately 4,000 years before the events of the original trilogy. Neo Crusaders were a more militant and aggressive group than the true Mandalorians, and they sought to conquer and expand Mandalorian territory in the galaxy. Next up we have Children of the Watch. Children of the Watch are a sect of Mandalorians that follow a strict interpretation of the way of the Mandalore. They believe that Mandalorian culture is in danger of being lost and seek to preserve it through a strict code of conduct. They wear their helmets at all times in public and adhere to a strict set of rules governing their behavior. Now, of course, we've seen them in The Mandalorian on Disney+, Plus, primarily Din Djarin, especially in the latest episode of Season 3, Episode 1. They were much more traditional, and they believed in the strict adherence of these traditions of Mandalorian culture, as well as a strong loyalty to their fellow Mandalorians. Notable members of the Children of the Watch include, of course, Din Djarin the Mandalorian and Paz Vizsla, a member of the Children of the Watch and a former member of the Death Watch. Paz Vizsla was a skilled warrior and fighter who is known for his strength and loyalty. Next up, of course, we have the Armorer, who is the one who seems to be in charge of all of them. Their strict adherence to the way of the Mandalore, including the never removing helmets rule, also set them apart from other Mandalorian sects and caused some controversy among fans of the franchise. A lot of people got confused. Well, why can't they remove their helmets when Bo-Katan and others can? It's mainly because of their code of honor and loyalty to their fellow Mandalorians and, well, just their rules, which remained a defining aspect of their identity as a group. Finally, I want to discuss quickly Clan Wren. Now, Clan Wren is a Mandalorian clan that features prominently in Star Wars Rebels. They're known for their warrior prowess and loyalty to Mandalore's traditional ways. They are led by Ursa Wren, who is a skilled warrior and a respected member of the Mandalorian community. They were a traditionalist Mandalorian clan that believed in the warrior culture and values of their people. Some notable members of Clan Wren include, of course, Ursa Wren, Tristan Wren, who was Ursa's son and a member of Clan Wren, skilled fighter and warrior, and of course Sabine Wren. A former member of Clan Wren, Sabine was a skilled fighter and artist who later became a member of the Ghost Crew in Rebels. Clan Wren differed from other Mandalorian sects in that they placed a strong emphasis on the importance of family and clan loyalty. They were known for their fierce independence and self-sufficiency and were willing to fight to protect their people and way of life. Their traditionalist values also set them apart from other Mandalorian factions, such as the pacifist New Mandalorians and the fundamentalist Children of the Watch. Clan Wren believed in the importance of strength, courage, and honor in battle, and saw warfare as a means of asserting their dominance and preserving their way of life. Overall, the Clan Wren was a significant faction in the Star Wars universe. And to keep it up to date with us going into Ahsoka, I want you to know a little more about Clan Wren and their unique perspective on Mandalorian culture. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video about the few Mandalorian factions that I think are some of the most important ones. Let me know which ones I left out and which ones I should cover in the next video about this topic. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video on Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always.